Welcome back to another freezer meal video. Welcome back. Today we are doing enchiladas, like I said, and we're actually approaching this a slightly different way than we did the last time. I have filmed us making enchiladas in bulk for freezer meals in the past, and we are doing it differently than I did in that video. So we have the same amounts that we're making. We are going to be making enchiladas and putting them in here for dinner tonight. And then we have two tins that we will be using for freezer meals. And we've done this enough that I know that once they are filled and rolled, we will get about eight enchiladas in this and 12 enchiladas in each of these. So that helps a lot with knowing exactly how many tortillas to lay out and knowing, okay, this is how many we're working with. So with whatever filling we have, we just apportion it evenly amongst all of these and we're good. So usually what we do is we'll go and add each ingredient individually. We'll just work our way around and adding each individual ingredient. It, it just takes a while, but we're adding each one to make sure each thing is apportioned evenly. And today we're doing it a little differently. Today we are actually taking a cue from a cue, uh, taking a page out of, I don't know what I'm trying to say. We're doing what we usually do with our breakfast burritos, which is we take all of the filling for the breakfast burritos, mix it together in a big bowl, and then just take an even scoop and scoop it into each tortilla to wrap it up. And then each burrito has the same amount of mixture, but the mixture itself might not be exactly the same from burrito to burrito. And that works out great. I still think, I think the burritos are absolutely delicious. We've done that a couple times now and it works out fine. So we're gonna try that with the enchiladas this time. And we're actually adding some corn and black beans this time, which Dan's getting going on the black beans. Technically, I, I was focusing on other ingredients and I accidentally got chili beans oh. instead of the black. Will that be okay? Yeah, it'll be fine by me. No, I will use that, that's fine. Right, good. Oh, so I'm gonna use chili beans this time, yeah, yeah. it'll be fine. He's working on getting them all mixed up. There is our chicken we are adding in. Okay. And we had, whoop, I forgot this was going. I started here. Oh, thank you. Yep. <laughs> I forgot that was on that our massive pot of enchilada sauce we are making. Look at that, that is beautiful. I need to grab all of our tortillas that we have on top of the fridge and start spreading those out. There is all of the mixture we are putting in. And there are all of the tortillas we are putting them in. So now the first step is adding all of the refried beans to these. Mm -hmm. Ooh, just throwing right on your foot. Oh, it's terrible. Oh no. Oh no. They're gonna call me bean foot. <laughs> there goes Schuler, Dan bean foot, Schuler. Oh goodness. <laughs> Hopefully that has us in shot. I don't actually know. We'll see. Hi. Two cans of refried beans spread between 30 tortillas or 30, uh, 20 for 32 tortillas. 32 tortillas. Yeah, there we go. So we're gonna start with a quarter cup measuring cup to use as our scoop and just do an even scoop on all of them to see then how much we have left and then just keep reapportioning until everything is even. You put a quarter cup in all of these and look, that is all that's left right there. We measured that exactly. That's pretty impressive. So that was what? That was a pound and a half of raw chicken that we cooked. So that does affect it because it shrinks a little and you get a little less once you cook it. Right. So we measured out a pound and a half of raw chicken, pointing at the ceiling, and then cooked it. And then that's one can of whole kernel corn, one can of beans, about how much onion and green pepper? Say approximately like uh, one medium sized yellow onion. And I would say maybe one half green pepper. Okay. Chopped in a little bit. Thereabouts. Nice. So 
just so you know, using a quarter cup scoop. And these are the medium soft taco flour tortillas that mm -hmm. we're using, so. Yeah, because some people, when they make enchiladas, they will go for like the corn tortillas, mm -hmm. considerably smaller, uh, but this still works really, really well. Yeah. And the other thing, I don't know how this is going to affect it, but something I still wonder is if by mixing the cooked chicken with the fresh vegetables, particularly the green pepper and the onion, that some of those juices of the fresh vegetable gives the chicken more flavor if it's all mixed together. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. We did salt and pepper the chicken mm -hmm. this time before we baked it, which we don't always do no. because the inside, the, the enchilada sauce is what gives these their, the most flavor. Mm -hmm. So we don't worry that much about the flavor on the inside because the enchilada sauce really does carry the whole thing. So Dan is just putting the little bit of mixture that's left into just a couple other tortillas. And then we're going to get started on rolling these up very easy and fast. I loved that. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get to pouring all the enchilada sauce, which is the yeah. really fun part. All right, we filled up ours first because we're actually gonna stick it in the oven so we can have dinner. Uh, and then here is the enchilada sauce. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pour some on. Can I angle you? There you go. You just hang out right there so I can do this. Um, where is my scraper? Here we go. And I'm just gonna eyeball this. Whoop. I'm gonna start with that. And we're gonna work on just covering all of the surface. Going like this to make sure it gets all the way around. We want to be a little careful to make sure we're getting in between each one of these. All right, that is basically, I'll turn the light on. Hey, look at that, wow. There is that, basically ready to go. I'm gonna pop a lid on this and stick it in the oven. Dan is hard at work getting those rolled. So much hard work. And I'll show you what it's like uh, when we get ready to add all the enchilada sauce to those. So here are the two meals, or the two trays of enchiladas ready to go. So Dan is just gonna start scooping mm -hmm. the rest of this enchilada sauce in mm -hmm. and I'm gonna sit down and watch. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> and something we like to try to do with the enchiladas that we make and specifically the ones that we freeze is we try to be extra generous with the enchilada sauce. Like you see this obscene amount he is putting on there. <laughs> Trying to keep it even. Yeah, yeah you're good. <laughs> but no, we will almost drown these enchilada enchiladas. enchiladas. Oh my gosh, I was trying not to add a d to the le to the end oh. of the word drown because it's not drowned. Right. We're not trying to drown these yeah. enchiladas. I was trying to correctly say drown, and I ended up <laughs> saying enchiladas. <laughs> oh my gosh, this. Oh, you can't win. My brain. Earlier today, I saw the word hubcaps and thought it was said hiccups. My brain is not here anymore. It has been a very busy day. But anyway, we are going to almost drown these enchiladas in enchilada sauce because we want to make sure that they don't dry out from being frozen and then getting thawed and reheated and so by giving them the extra enchilada sauce it helps make sure that, that moisture is retained so that they still come out tasting good and the tortilla doesn't dry out or get hard anywhere and so far it's worked out fantastically how well these spread out will depend somewhat on the the thickness of the sauce. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we've actually kept it pretty thick. Yeah. And one of the benefits of the the thickness of the sauce is that you have more control about where it's supposed to go. So here. So you can see here, there's still even some parts that are left untouched. That's not a bad thing uh, because what that means is like if if it was too thin, it would just run over and fill up the bottom so that the bottoms of these would get soaked up with, with the enchilada sauce and the top, not so much. So if it's kept thick, it can, uh, the tortillas themselves can absorb 
all of the sauce a little bit more evenly so that you get flavor all throughout and it's not just all at the bottom and none on the top. So yeah. it works that way. You're very cool. So there, is that all that you're going to put on there? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, was, I wasn't sure yeah, if you were not, wanting to put more or not. I mean, whatever's left here is not worth saving. Okay, so we will just spread it between yeah. the two. Sounds so. good. So we're going to finish doing that, but then the way that we package these up is we will let this, we'll let the enchilada sauce cool a little more because the enchilada sauce was still just a little on the warm side. So, oh, that's actually pretty cold. That has yeah. cooled off pretty substantially. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we're going to, the way we usually uh, wrap these to freeze them is once it's totally cool, we will put tin foil over the top and then we'll wrap it the whole entire thing in a layer of tin foil. And then we'll go back through and wrap it, uh, the whole thing in a layer or two of saran wrap. And that just helps protect it so it stays fresher longer because the rule of thumb is you typically want to use a freezer meal within three months of freezing it for it to be at its freshest. But if you wrap it well, it can last and still be plenty fresh for a lot longer than that. And you're not really concerned all that much with losing any quality. So if you wrap it really well, it, it isn't as much of a ticking time bomb of it's going to be nasty when you eat it. So, but if you don't wrap it like crazy well, if you just put tin foil on it and threw it in the freezer, you would probably want to use it within like a month or two. So that's why we wrap it that little bit extra. Um, and then it's good for a while. And we were actually, just before I started filming, we were actually already talking about two people we know that are getting ready to have babies that we might be giving these to. So yeah, these might already have a future home with uh, families with new babies. So you are joining me out in the garage because while this clip is not us actually doing a freezer meal together, this is kind of freezer meal adjacent. I have been wanting to do this for a while. You were in the garage with me because this is where we keep our small little chest freezer. And I have been meaning to organize this thing for a long time. This is currently what it looks like. We have everything just kind of piled in here. And we have this bag. This is meat for my mom that she is going to be taking home with her. And it's just, it's a disaster. You don't, you can't tell where anything is because everything's just piled together. So what I've been wanting to do is take these fabric totes and attempt to organize this freezer, even if it's just a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on taking some stuff out of this freezer and trying to organize them just a little bit. I only have these two totes. These are actually the fabric totes that have been in my craft room that hold all of my vinyl. So I've taken all of them out of there because I just wanted to experiment to see if I liked this before I went out and bought a bunch of fabric totes because I didn't want to spend the money on them if I didn't like this method or I didn't think it would be useful. So we're just experimenting with these and if it works well, we'll go out tomorrow. We have to go grocery shopping anyway and we'll get some more fabric totes to make this a more permanent thing. But my hope is to at least separate a few things so that when we come in here to find something, it's easier to know what we're looking for rather than worrying about something having fallen or slipped or gotten buried under things and then we're digging half of the freezer out to find something. So that's what we're going to do. I am going to just check in with you because I was going to set you up for a time lapse and then I forgot my tripod and I don't want to go back in and get it. So this, I will show you one more time. This is the before. Take this out. See, this see what we're working with here. This is the before. There is absolutely no organization to it at all. And I'll show you what it looks like in a second. This only took me a couple seconds because I only grabbed some things from the top. These are just either meat we have separated into baggies already or like small. We, I know I'll be grabbing this whole thing and it's just, it's a small prepackaged thing. And then this one, I have the smaller things of different freezer meals. I'm already obsessed. That took all of five seconds and I'm obsessed and want all of the fabric totes in there to organize things. That's going to make it so much easier to find things because if it's in a tote, it's just that much easier to grab.
<laughs> All right, I'm going to put you like that for a second. It is the next day. I obviously, as you saw from the last clip, I'm obsessed with these totes. So we are going to organize this freezer today. I bought four more totes. So actually, if you want to help me rip these open here. And then we will get to organizing. I don't think I actually have any rhyme or reason to how I want to do this, like, specifically but we'll kind of wing it as we go also it's very cold it is may 1st it is not supposed to be this cold got all four totes hanging out right there also the dogs are hanging out with us currently i'm gonna put some gloves on and start loading that full of all of the meat in the freezer and then after we get everything in there then we can clean this out and get to organizing all right, our wagon is currently stuffed. I just cleaned out most of the teriyaki sauce. Now we're gonna try to scrape some of this down. All right, we have the sides scraped down pretty well and I was using a plastic scraper thing. I wasn't using metal on that, that was plastic. So we got it cleaned up. We got it scraped. Now we're ready to start organizing so I can close that for now while we start figuring out how we want to do things. Elliot, Elliot in the background being the emotional support here. Go, mama, go. Go, mama, go. All right, so I think I'm gonna do things like our sausage links and fish in one. Might do like prepackaged stuff in another. <laughs> um, I want some. Oh. Maybe I'll do like large prepackaged stuff in another. So all those can go in one. That. And that and then we have all that space back there so I'm going to take these thighs and stand them up back here this can go on top of that oh my oh yes this can go on top of that and then excuse me mom we can put bigger freezer meals on that shelf right there. And our pizzas can then balance right back there again. Ta-da! Ta-da! I'm cold. Whew. Okay, I'm sure my hair is crazy right now and that's fine. I don't care. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end this freezer meal video here. Thank you for coming along and watching it when hanging out with me. Uh, I am really, really hoping that having those totes in there helps us keep our freezer a little more organized so we're not having to constantly dig for things. I'll probably rearrange how I have them divvied up and whatnot as I go and get used to that system, but I'm hoping that this is going to be a very easy way for us to know what we have in there, know where to put things when we add them to it, and hopefully also allow us to fit more in there because we aren't just throwing things on top of each other. So we shall see. If you have any tips or tricks with organizing a freezer, having done something similar to this with your own freezers, please let me know. I would love to hear them. I am in the market for an upright freezer. I've been checking Facebook Marketplace because I'd really like to have all of our freezer meals that we make in an upright freezer so that that smaller freezer, the, the chest freezer, can just be for meat and like any veggies that we happen to make and freeze or whatever. So that's something I'm in the market for. Maybe I'll get that at some point. I don't know. But yes, that is that. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.